Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a raycast using Unreal's line trace single by channel functionality. We're going to have this raycast shoot out from the camera view when clicking the left button. And in this video, we're going to have it output the name of the actor that it hits. And in a future video, we're going to have it actually duplicate the actor that it hits. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So to go ahead and start this off, we actually need to create an action mapping so that way we know when we're clicking the left mouse button in order to create the raycast. So we're going to go to our input in our project settings. We're going to add an action mapping and we're going to call this action mapping cast and I'm going to attach it to my left mouse button. And that's the only mapping that we'll need for this tutorial. So now we can go ahead and open up our character script. You can open up any character script that you have for your player. If you need a character script, I will provide a link in the description below for our character controller tutorial. But again, you can use whatever character script you have. So once it's open, we wanna go over to our header. And we're going to start by adding some includes. The first include that we're going to add is going to be game framework slash actor.h. And this one's needed so we can get access to different actor functionalities. And one of those main functionalities is going to be in that future video when we duplicate the actor that our raycast hits. Our next include is going to be for our world and it's engine slash world.h. And we need this include because whenever you use the line trace single by channel function, you have to get the world first. So that's what that include is for. And then the final include that we're going to do is kind of optional. I'm going to end up doing a debug line so that way you can see the raycast. And so I'm going to need draw debug helpers.h. If you don't want the raycast to be drawn onto your screen so you can see where it's hitting, you don't need this include. And now that we have our includes, we can go ahead and go down and create the function that we'll need. So this function is going to be void. I'm just going to call it ray and it's going to have no arguments. And now that that's done, we can go ahead and go over to our CPP. And the first thing you want to do is add this input. So we're going to do input component bind axis, sorry, bind action and the action is the name that we gave the mapping. So in this case, it was cast. We want it to be called whenever we press. So we're going to do IE pressed. And then we're binding it to this. And then the function we're going to call is a my character ray. And what this line is doing is taking the action mapping of cast that we set up inside of our project settings, binding it to this function of ray. So that way, whenever the mapping is pressed, it will call that function. And now we can go ahead and actually create that function. So void a my character ray. And inside this function, the first thing we're wanting to do is get the start and end point of our ray. So I'm going to do f vector and this will be my start. And I want my start to be the actor's location. And then I also wanna get the forward vector of my camera, so that way I can determine the angle of the ray. So I'm gonna just call it forward, and I want this to be the camera's forward vector. And now that I have the forward vector of my camera and the player's rotation, I'm actually going to adjust my start. And the reason I'm adjusting my start from just the player's location is because I want the ray to be a little bit in front of my player. Otherwise, my player is going to be the thing that the ray hits each time. So I want it to be a little bit in front of my player so that doesn't happen. So we're going to take our start again and do F vector. And then inside it, I want my starts X. And I'm going to add to this the forward vector x value and then I'm going to multiply it by a hundred and I'm going to do the same thing for my y and z but real quick to explain what this means I'm taking that start position in other words where my player is located which is that start dot x 
but I also want it to be slightly forward from that player. So I need to figure out which direction is forward. I don't want to just add to the X direction because the X direction on the player may actually be to the left of the player. So I need to figure out the value of that forward vector and then multiply it by some value. I picked 100 and that's the value that I want it to be away from the player. So if the X direction is 100% the forward, then this forward vector in the X direction will end up being one and I will add 100 units to my start x position. If the forward vector is the y direction, then this forward.x will be zero. I will multiply that by 100, it will still be zero, and then we won't add to our x position and the x will just stay as the original start. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do this to the y and z directions as well. So start.y plus the forward.y times 100. And then finally start.z plus the forward dot z times 100. So again, the forward values in the x, y, and z axes will range between zero and one, depending on what the forward vector is. So now that we have our start position in relation to our camera's forward vector, we can go ahead and create our end. So it's going to be f vector end and then for this we want it to be our start position and then I'm going to do plus the forward and then I'm going to multiply it by 1000 and that's essentially the length that I want it to go. You should adjust this number depending on how far out you want your raycast to go. And now that we have the start and end of our line we can go ahead and actually create this line trace. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have a world so we're going to do get world because we don't want to create any null references with that. And then from there, we're going to create a Boolean and I'm going to just call it actor hit. And this is going to tell us if our line trace actually hits an actor. And then we're going to do our get world. So that way we can do our line trace single by channel is our hit results. So we're going to do hit and then it wants the start position which we've done, and the end position, and then it wants the collision channel, so we're going to do ECC, and then we're looking for pawns. And then next it wants our collision query, I'm just going to give it a default one, so I'm just going to do F collision query, parameters, and then finally it wants the collision response parameter, so I'm just going to do the same thing and give it a default constructor for it. So F collision response parameters, and then that is our line trace. And I forgot to create a variable for our hit. So we're going to do F hit result and just call it hit. And this hit property will hold the values of the actor that is hit. And now we can go back down into this and I'm going to go ahead and do that draw debug line so that way we can see it in the scene. So draw debug line and then you want to get world and then you want to give it the same start, the same end. You want to pick a color, I'm just going to do red. And then whether you want it to be persistent, in other words, is it going to stay in the scene? I want it to go away after some amount of time, so I'm gonna do false there. And then the lifetime of the line, I'm just gonna do two. And then the depth, I'm just gonna give zero. And the thickness, I'll give 10. And again, the draw debug line just shoots out a line so you can visually see what your line trace is doing. Now that we've done our line trace, we actually wanna to check to see if the line hit anything. So we're gonna do if actor hit, in other words, an actor was returned from our line trace. And if that hit value has a get actor. And we're just doing this so that way we don't end up with any null reference errors if there is no actor that was hit by the line trace. And then the last line of code for this video is going to be a debug line and we're just going to output the actor's name. So I'm gonna do G engine, add on screen debug message. I'm gonna do negative one, two for the duration, 
the F color will be red. And then the thing I'm debugging is going to be the hits actor. And we're going to get its F name. And then you want to make sure to two string that so that way it can properly output it. And again, I'm doing a debug line here to just show the name of the actor that is hit. In a future video, I'll create another function that we'll call here so that way we can duplicate the actor that's hit. But inside this if statement where the debug message is, is where you'll put whatever code you're wanting to happen after you've had a successful raycast. But this is all the code for this video, so now we'll go ahead and go back to the scene and compile. And now that our compile has completed, we can go ahead and test and play. And now if I go ahead and test and play, you can see that it shoots a red little laser out to the scene, and whenever it hits an actor in the left corner, it pops out its name. So this is a chair, that's a table, and that's another chair. And then if I look around, you can see that it goes with the forward vector of my camera. And if I shoot the sky, you can tell it doesn't have an actor's name because it's not hitting anything. But when it does hit any actor within the scene, it pops up the name for that. So as a recap for this video, we made it to where we could find the name of actors within the scene by shooting out a line trace from the player with relation to the forward vector of the camera. Again, in a future video, we'll be creating another function that will allow us to duplicate actors within our scene that this line trace interacts with. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We make videos here every Wednesday and Saturday, but we also stream on Twitch Tuesday and Wednesday, so be sure to go and check that out. We've created a game called Blast Off on the Google Play Store. We also have an asset pack on the Unity Store of Kids Toys, and we have a Patreon. If any of those things interest you, or you'd like to support us in any of those ways, everything will be linked in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.